Today we're reviewing the latest offering from FlyDigi, China's number one gamepad company, and I'm holding it side by side with the Vader 3 Pro, an $80 controller that recently won my controller of the year during this year's, well, last year's, I guess, Gamer Heaven Controller and Real Game Awards, a very prestigious honor, no doubt. But this Switch and PC controller, which just dropped into my hand and also onto the markets, is a tad bit more cheaper at $50, however shares a lot of the core components that I personally like, such as the magnetic Hall Effect thumbstick modules, which are virtually stick drift proof. It can still happen to you, sweetheart. In this video, we're going to analyze some of the marketing fluff or hype around this controller, some of the verbatim verbiage from this company, which I thought was a little bit silly, a little wacky, but also we're going to test it and see if that actually applies in real world when you're gaming with the software. And lo and behold, spoiler alert, all the manufacturer's claims were true, although we're still going to have a good time laughing at some of their silly marketing. And we'll forever get lost in the sauce and the confusion of the model lineup of FlyDigi, whether you're on their website or Amazon, although they have spruced up their website and it looks a lot better now, a lot cleaner. By the end of the video, you'll know if you should pick this bad boy up for $50 or this bad boy for $80, or just neither. You should just, no gamepad for you. You just go home and use the stalker that you've got. Welcome aboard, Stallion or Stallionette. Over 200 gamepads to tested, not letting off the throttle, controller looking like a model, reviews go down smooth, pass me the bottle, I got paddles, back to the lobby with a waddle, gaming news, gear reviews, more controllers than you can use, a man of many faces, recording by the smoking aces, I wasn't born the controller captain, it was you bucking broncos that made it happen. <laughs> Enough input delay, this video is slapping. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. The box design is almost identical to the other models, the several other models from FlyDigi's China's number one gamepad company. Rather than linking every FlyDigi controller review that I've done in the description below because it would get clogged up like an old man's arteries, you can either check the controller playlist and I will also link the Vader 3 review down there because that's the one where I do a comprehensive comparison of all the different models and also a deep dive into the confusion of their website and how it doesn't really correspond with some of the Amazon listings. Some of that has been fixed, but uh, some of it has not. <laughs> Anywho, flipping her on her backside, you are going to have some of the key features, which are going to be Hall Effect thumbsticks, so increased accuracy and decreased chance of stick drift. We do know that not all Hall Effect thumbstick modules are created equal. We've seen some killers and we've seen some stinkers. Then this has the new silicone on keypad 2.0 we'll be testing it out for show I'm getting that for show and then it's got pc and mobile support yeah that's it android and windows this doesn't work with any of the consoles we are going to test support with converters or adapters on all of the popular platforms of course little pull tab right here so very simplistic minimalistic packaging you are going to have your instruction manual pamphlet or brochure with this very very cheap included 2.4 gigahertz dongle which is the same that i've bashed on previous reviews we'll smack it around in just a second also an incredibly lackluster included usb C cable. It's about six foot rubber, not microfiber or braided. No dust covers on the A or C end, just a rubber band around it. No Velcro tie back. It's going to stay connected, uh, but it is purple within the USB A side. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and the USB C side. So that's, that's got to count for something. Little egg carton, if you will, little plastic sneeze guard, pull that to the side. And this looks almost identical to a controller I reviewed on the channel like a year and a half ago. I think it's on the wall, actually. I hope it is. That would make this pretty cool. Aha. Yes. Okay, so this is the Vader 2, which I reviewed like a year and a half to two years ago on the channel, and it looks hella similar to what we're reviewing here today. It's very confusing with a lot of these FlyDigi models. So in this first accordion, it is going to be a breakout of some of their models. There are several more, because keep in mind, these are the third. They still sell the previous two generations. And as you can see, the models do look very similar. This is going to be your instruction manual that does fold out like an accordion and isn't the most sexy thing in the world. However, it's not terrible. English is the primary language, decent font and some pretty useful diagrams. Does everything that you would expect an instruction manual would. There's also a soft document if you scan this QR code so you can pinch and zoom. Whenever you scan the QR code on that instruction manual, it takes you to some Fushi docs or something that I don't really, I, I kind of want to burn my phone now. I don't really feel too secure right now. As for this dongle, it is so freaking light. I'm gonna find out exactly how light. Uh 
it's barely registering four grams for the dongle. Yet this feels like I am holding absolutely nothing, just literal uh, air. And it's got these two matte black sides sandwiching this piano or gloss black in the middle, which is already has fingerprints and micro scratches on it. And it just came to me. So they're not from these fingertips. Also, it's really long too. So it's pretty cosmetically gross hanging off the front of your tower as opposed to tiny dongles from the competitors. Also, you've got the branding of the model. Enough bashing on the dongle. The controller is also freakishly light, although I don't subscribe to the camp that a heavier gamepad equates to better quality because we saw with the Power A Fusion 1 and 2 putting lead sinkers, basically fishing weights in the palm grips, eh, which is just craziness. Luckily, that was done away with the version 3. They also made the jump from paddles to rear buttons, but this is also a very light controller. 7.6 ounces, 214 grams. As for the cosmetics or appearance, this isn't a bad looking gamepad by any means. In fact, it's pretty classy and understated, pretty much all white, with this little bit of gray lettering on the face buttons, but I'm not too wild about the contrast pop of blue around the uh, anti-friction rings, but I really do like these dark gray thumbsticks. In the back, you are gonna have the sticker denoting that you do have three toggles, a 2.4G mode, Bluetooth in the center, and then NS for Nintendo Switch. I'm not a huge fan of this large sticker in the middle. I know consumer law permits that this sticker exists. I think it could have been made a little bit sexier back here. Cosmetics, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. Repeat, five out of 10. As for ergonomics or comfort, this is almost identical shape and shell designed to an Xbox One or Series controller. The only difference is you're going to have rear buttons, which are almost sunk with the rear shells, so they don't cut into the comfort negatively at all. And I've never had a problem with the Fly Digi controllers. In fact, I've touted them as being some of the most comfortable gamepads on the market. This one is no exception. Comfort, 9 out of 10. As for the build quality, I already mentioned this is a freakishly light controller. We had it on the scale just a minute ago, and uh, that doesn't really equate to this feeling like it's cheap or anything, but what I'm not a huge fan of is going to be these face buttons. We'll talk about it during the face buttons section. Every other component feels good, though. D-pad thumbsticks, bumpers, triggers, and also the palm grips. Plastics used don't feel porous and cheap. In fact, they feel really nice. So uh, the fact that it's light is just an additional treat, less wrist fatigue. No crazy panel gaps or seams, but you have to know and just accept that this is a cheap controller. If you're buying it for $50, and that's if you bought it through a reputable vendor like Amazon, you can pick these up on Alibaba, AliExpress, Wish.com. If you don't really give a shit about customer service, waiting six to seven weeks, and God forbid you need some kind of a refund policy in place. If this controller is being sold for 40 to 60 dollars it's being produced for a fraction of that this doesn't feel cheap whatsoever and, and other than a hard drop onto a vinyl floor well i don't know who the hell's rocking vinyl anymore maybe in your kitchen or something you're making a snack and you drop this bad boy it should be just fine build quality wise six out of 10. Also in those previous Fly Digi reviews, I did have a little deep dive into the warranty and refund policy page of their website. That video is linked in the description below, but it's one year. It's one year of standardized coverage here in North America. Damn, this thing's dusty. This has what Fly Digi calls the rotary D-pad. So much like that old circular telephone at Great Nana's house, it's going to be throwing that ass in a circle basically. Meaning that there's eight micro switches or eight separate gates. So as opposed to a D-pad where it's difficult to hit diagonals because you have to hit two separate switches together, for each of the diagonal movements. Or so Fly Digi would like you to believe, however, it is actually only four switches that are being recognized. While this feels nice and cosmetically looks pretty good, it's probably one of my least favorite wheeled D-pads, or I guess this is technically a hybrid because you also have a little bit of a four point in there as well. I see what you're doing there. As far as how this actually functions in fighting games and whatnot, roll-off's decent, diagonal inputs, kind of a bitch, and just don't like the way that it feels a little bit sloppy, if you will. Six out of 10. As for the face or action buttons, this sports the silicone button 2.0s, which are literally just stock membrane buttons. I'm gonna be popping up in front of my face, kind of overlay in front of me on a second primordial dimension. A little marketing blurb that was sent about this controller, some talking points for it, which, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> It really seems as if just stock regular membrane buttons were left in because these feel identical to any standard membrane button you've ever used in an Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo controller, but it's kind of marketed or fluffed up as being an additional feature. I'm gonna do a teardown or disassembly in a future video because I have a hunch, and you ain't gotta be Sherlock Holmes, that these are just regular membrane buttons, but they're the silicone button 2.0. Ho. Like, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's lemonade. Just call it straight, shoot it straight, and call it like it is. These are membrane buttons. It's no big deal. I wouldn't bash I wouldn't bash the company for including membrane buttons on a $50 controller, or shoot, even a $170 controller. So a lot of gamers prefer membrane switches. When you're trying to call it something that it ain't, that tickles my biscuits in the wrong, wrong way. As for the accessory button suite, so that it's going to be the start and select buttons, as well as the home and capture button for Nintendo Switch. I have no quarrels with start and select. It's kind of awkward that they're at a 45 degree angle and 
their ovals, but they're pretty easy to hit. They also feel really nice, tactile and clicky sweet but down here these buttons are kind of a chore to hit they're small and also they're up and out of the way and granted these are two buttons that you don't hit too frequently unless you're somebody that captures a lot of gameplay clips or you just swap between games constantly i don't really like the positioning the feel of these buttons or anything and it kind of brings down what was going to be a good score in the accessory button department because of these top two buttons so i'm going to give them a six out of ten repeat six out of ten the d-pad was a five out of ten and the face for action buttons are also a five out of ten it's very mid mid controller mid gear mid grade mid phase that's a slang term that i recently learned and it's it's fun you should try it as for the thumbsticks i am quite a bit of a fan they are hall effect thumbstick modules so they are virtually stick drift proof unless the recentering spring goes out on you which does happen over time or can at least just like regular potentiometer thumbstick modules can get stick drift over time but it is far less likely with hall effect thumbstick modules because there is less physical components it's literally just that recentering spring anyway i do like the fact that these have anti-friction rings around on the outside of the thumbstick gate so you're gonna glide along some smooth plastic when you're at full lock suck a cock as with all fly digi models you can pop these bad boys off oh, oh, oh do they not oh golly so all other fly digi models that i've tested recently these thumbstick caps do not pop off now some of them do not have swappable options included accessory wise but since you can pop them off that makes it safer to put on control freaks because you're not pushing down putting undue force on those thumbstick modules not an option here these things are permanently affixed but the included caps very grippy the rubber or silicone they went with very nice smooth section in the middle but it is grippy rubber and then around the outside you have these little rings they do feel very nice clicking down l3 and r3 tight and secure but let's test these bad boys on the pc shall we over here in gamepad tester wirelessly connected via that 2.4 gigahertz dongle and you were going to see a perfect resting value of 0 0.00002 on both the vertical and horizontal axes of the left and right thumbsticks and when i move them to and fro and then i stop they snap back to that same neutral value every time. Also very responsive as soon as I provide input that is registered. Things that you're not gonna get when you're playing on Switch. When you're playing in Switch mode, all Switch games naturally have a large inner and outer dead zone baked in. I guess it's because they assume you're using either the Joy-Cons or the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which also has big dead zones. Or Nintendo figures that you're not playing some competitive shooters like Call of Duty and Apex on the Switch. Apex, it does have a port for the Switch, but it's like, uh, not really playable sidetrack much do you there bud so running our first circularity test to get the thumbstick accuracy you are going to see about the same results as a standard potentiometer thumbstick module which is not surprising some hall effect thumbsticks such as the ones inside of game sir's g7 se and also ghoulie kits offering are down there in the one percentile range no big deal here these perform phenomenally on pc and on switch the bumpers feel just like a stock microsoft series controller which is a good thing you have these little bumps little stippling on there which provides a good amount of grip on both the bumpers and triggers and you can actuate these with both the meat or the tip of your index finger good amount of resistance required so you shouldn't get any false actuations i like these a lot i'm gonna give the bumpers an 8 out of 10 as for the triggers there's no kind of trigger lock or stop system and resistance and travel wise these feel just like a stock xbox controller i'm gonna give them a 7 out of 10 as for these rear buttons these took us inputs if you will there's some things i like and some things i kind of don't like you just described the point of a review most importantly these are very ergonomically comfortable where you want to naturally rest your hand as you wrap them around the palm grips which is very comfortable because it's an xbox style controller your middle fingers right where the ball is well, well, this little moose knuckle right here i'm not flipping you the bird but this little little you know right there boom is directly covering each of these buttons and the plastics don't necessarily feel very cheap but they do feel a little bit hollowy and also don't produce the most confidence inducing sound when you actuate them Good to see Toys R Us is back in business. These also strike a good balance of resistance so you don't get any false actuations and also just being easy to hit. I do like that. What I don't like is the fact that you cannot rebind them on the fly. I have like a piece of dead skin on my lip that I'm trying to get removed, but it's still connected, which hurts like a son of a bitch. So I'm just gonna hold the controller out in front of me right here like I got herpes or something. You cannot rebind these on the fly. You need the Fly Digi Space application, which we're very acquainted with. It's the same program that's used for almost all of the controllers. I say almost all because they have like a 2.0 version that's for a a couple of their flagship premium models but the fact that you need a computer program keep in mind it has to be on pc there's no mobile phone application no nintendo switch application which by the way i don't think any controller companies have applications for the switch unlike xbox and playstation where there's third-party manufacturers like nacon and pdp with the victrix that have a software suite right there on the console you, you need a pc to bind these rear buttons or else they're just not usable so if you fall into that camp these are a zero out of 10 for you because you can't use them but if you can use them they're like a solid 
7 out of 10. 7 out of a potential 10 in a vast world of rear buttons and back paddles. <laughs> the software to run the hardware is going to be Fly Digi Game Center getting you there from Google. There she is. Fly Digi website. Internet's slow as shit right now. Girlfriend's working in the other room. Probably sucking all the bandwidth. I'm, I'm tethered via Ethernet and I usually get a gig down. What is happening? Probably loading that super high resolution photo. So as you can see, you have multiple options over here. Click on this one right here. Fly Digi Space. And how you know I'm not just blowing smoke up your patootie. It says right here, support for the Dire Wolf. Doesn't say Dire Wolf 2, but you know. <laughs> But Space 3.0 is only for the Vader 3 and 3 Pro and eventually the Apex 3, but currently that's over here as well. Over here in the Fly Digi Space application, which I've just pinned to the taskbar for ease of use. As you can see, there's a few supported models here. The Dire Wolf 2, not one of them. Let's plug the son of a gun in. It vibrated in my hand and I will say the vibration motors were chunky, funky. So what I really do like about this Fly Digi controllers and all the others is that you have three separate paths for your settings and those will match up with that toggle in the back. So whether you're in Switch, PC, or iOS mode, mobile mode, you're going to have all of your separate settings. So things like your bindings and your thumbstick sensitivity curves and trigger dead zones. So we're going to spend our time over here in PC mode. And again, when I clicked it, it, my gosh, the vibration is strong. Cannot recognize this controller model. And that's because there is an initial firmware update that needs to happen. Okay, it's flickering in the background. Is it going to stop that ever? It'd be nice if there's a little progress bar instead of just giving me an epileptic seizure. So when this is drop down, it doesn't have the Dire Wolf 2. When you click on video tutorial, it takes you to an untrusted website, which I'm not going to dick around with. So unfortunately, the software program that is supposed to work with the Dire Wolf 2, that is the Space Station 2.0, does not work with this controller currently. So that's shitty. Now, if you have been able to get the software up and running, please drop that down there in the comment section below. But to my knowledge, the application is not properly working on Windows for the Direwolf 2 or Direwolf Switch as it was labeled in the software. But in my previous Fly Digi controller reviews, I do a pretty lengthy in-depth walkthrough of all the things you can do, all the tweaks to your controller you can do within the space application. The Direwolf 2 has a substantially larger, physically larger battery from 535 milliamp hours to 800. And that was a major complaint with the first Direwolf was subpar battery life. Now it's advertised that the Direwolf 2 will net you around 20 hours of gameplay. Me personally, this is my initial impressions review. I've got about six to 10 hours of stick time with this bad boy. I have yet to kill the battery. In fact, I haven't even gotten a low battery LED indicator yet, but one to two hours of charge time. So we'll go right in the middle there with an hour and a half should get you up and running with 20 hours of gameplay, which if that is the case, that's very good. It is not great considering controllers like the Microsoft Elite Series 2 have 40 hours of gameplay and the Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra 30 plus for a Switch controller with an 800 milliamp hour battery. Not bad, not bad at all. And this is where you can tell they've been busting out the thesaurus or AI is doing a hell of a job writing for them. Wired response rate has been improved from 125 to 500 and the wireless response has been enhanced. So they didn't want to reuse, you know, the same word, but we're going to test that right the second, actually. Change that wallpaper real quick. Give you something a little more sexy to look at. All righty, X input tester. Tell me your secrets. Wowzers. They might have undercut themselves a little bit here. I haven't applied an overclock. Keep that in mind. 1.89 milliseconds off the draw and consistent as popping off a bra. I mean, look at this Jesus Christ here. Jitter also low and just like golf low or better here. They, it in, indeed is a 500 herder. Run one more again. Let's run gamepad LA because that's a fun one. Rotate the left stick without stopping. So this is showing a thousand hertz. As you rotate, it's in the 500s, but showing in brackets right next to it, a thousand. Okay. Unfortunately, in the Lord of Mice overclocking software, when I tried to push to a thousand hertz, this became a little bit unstable. It was starting to have some issues, thumbstick registration issues and whatnot. But then tapering back to 500, the stock clock, it was A-OK, -okay, but it didn't see any boost from speeds, obviously, because that is the stock clock. So while I can't say that it's polling rate locked like a standard Xbox controller, I will say it became unstable at anything over 500 for me. As for the pros, I really do enjoy the vibration on this controller. It's incredibly strong and chonky, and also you do have full control over all four of the vibration motors within the space station application if and when you can get it up and running that is cosmetically i think this is a very good looking controller i know i didn't give it stellar marks during the cosmetic section and this light she actually looks pretty good the triggers are phenomenal they do feel almost identical to a standard xbox controller however in gameplay they actually do feel slightly more responsive you'll notice that in things like racing games modulating the throttle and brake the next pro is going to be these thumbsticks i enjoy them a whole hell of a lot they perform pretty damn good in gameplay and the final pro is going to be having three modes of 
with connectivity. Granted, the dongle feels like a cheap old piece of shit, but you do have the option 2.4G Bluetooth, although it's got to be an older Bluetooth technology like 5.0, maybe even 3.0. Definitely ain't no 5.1. It's slow and not very consistent. Another two pros is going to be on the PC side of the house. The Fly Digi controllers all share the same gyroscope motion aiming, which works phenomenally. It's very responsive right out of the box. And also it does have a recalibration tool in their space station software, which let it be known, I've used that program before in the past, the 2.0 and the 3.0, but it just doesn't work with this particular controller, probably because it just came out. But also you do have full support in Rewaz, where you can rebind the rear buttons or any of the buttons to Windows controls. So these rear buttons don't have to be just mapped to the face button or D-pad. You can actually have these be Windows keys, like spacebar and alt. I don't know why you'd want that, but people always mention that. They go, oh, does it have Rewaz support? This does. So if you want to be able to swap between scenes in your OBS or something, whatever it is that you want to do, Windows key binding wise, all the Fly Digi controllers can do it. They can also clip chins really well too with the gyroscope motion aiming. So as for the verdict, getting it right out of the way, right up front, yes, I do believe this offers a good value at $50. You have good vibration motors, you have gyro, you have Hall Effect thumbstick modules and triggers, two super comfortable rear buttons and everything feels good in hand. But looking at the rest of their lineup, because there are some other models that I can recommend more so in the same price point, depending on your needs. Now, this is the cheapest controller that I would recommend from Fly Digi at $50, and this would be for Switch or PC. Now, you can get it up and running on the Xbox or playing PS4 games on the PS5 with Brook Accessories adapters, or you can even play PS5 games on the PS5, but only using a Bezavier adapter, which is kind of expensive. Now, I have a couple of Amazon pages pulled up. I can 110% recommend getting the Vader 3 Pro. It gets my utmost recommendation, my number one recommendation for any Fly Digi controller, as it is, in my opinion, the best controller that they do offer. Not the most expensive, as I have also reviewed this beast, the Apex 3, and a more expensive limited edition variant of it. But you got your Dire Wolf over here. Ooh, a 5% coupon as well, so actually cheaper than 50 bucks right now. But the Vader 3 Pro at $30 more, and keep in mind, this runs on sale pretty frequently, has tactile mechanical face buttons, these two additional buttons, which are membrane. I wish they were mechanical as well, but overall feels better, looks a little bit better in my opinion. And you can remove the thumbsticks. Granted, there's no swappable option, but it makes getting control freaks on and off easier. But most notably, the Vader 3 Pro does have four remappable rear buttons as opposed to two. And you do have some killer trigger stops that do become a mechanical mouse click that aren't very loud either and just feel phenomenal. A little bit light. You could get some false actuations when you're adapting to them, but once you get a little more light handed. So yeah, the Vader 3 Pro gets my recommendation. I would pick it up over the Dire Wolf 2 personally, you know, $30 more. But if you're just looking for a good switch controller, this would absolutely be the, 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 the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. But if you're looking for a controller only to play on the Switch platform, you're not going to be bringing it to PC, then yeah, this absolutely is worth it at $50. And it is linked in the description below alongside the other Fly Digi models that I have tested. Drop in the comment section below what you think of this gamepad. Do you like the cut of its jib, the flow of its sails? And I will see you stallions and stallionettes. I don't know why I said it so slurry, like I just hit a 40 under my desk or something. I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow tomorrow.